everyone welcome to a plus bi this channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quick and easy equation we have e to the power i theta equals sine theta plus i cosine theta and we're going to be solving for theta because that's the only unknown right we don't have r i is a constant sine and cosine are trigonometric functions so on and so forth I'll be presenting two methods. I mean, this problem is fairly easy if you are familiar with complex numbers, especially what is called Euler's formula. But the first method, even though it's long, I think you're going to enjoy it because we're going to use some interesting ideas. And it's kind of like a general method for these kinds of problems. Anyways, before we get started, I want to tell you the original version of this problem was a little different. It was e to the i theta equals sine theta minus i cosine theta. I don't know wh why I thought of this problem. And then when I checked it out, it did not really come up with a good solution. So you might want to try to solve the other version as well and let me know how that goes. I don't want to spoil the surprise. I'm going to leave it to you. Anyways, that was just something that I wanted to share with you. I hope you can you know, try to solve it and let me know. So. In order to be able to solve this problem, we're going to start with the first method because the first method is more fun, which means more work, right? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by i. And you might be questioning, why is that helpful? Actually, that's something that I learned from the comments to an earlier video. You see, I learned a lot of things from my audience. So you guys are awesome. Keep it up. I multiply both sides by i because it helps. So let's see. i times e to the i theta equals i sine theta plus i times i, i squared cosine theta. Hopefully you know i squared is equal to negative 1. If not, please check out the lecture videos or just look it up. i squared equals negative 1. By definition, it's actually the number whose square is negative 1. Imaginary number, whatever you want to call it, fake number. It's actually very, very real. Anyways, in, in a different sense. So, what does this give us though, right? Well, we kind of have something interesting on the right-hand side because it kind of switches the sine and cosine, but it also negates the cosine. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to write this as negative cosine theta, writing this part first, plus i sine theta. So if I had cosine theta plus i sine theta, I was going to be like, Yes, I got Euler's formula for e to the i theta, but this is not it. And on the left-hand side, I have i e to the i theta. I understand e to the i theta is a number whose modulus is 1, but what about i? Can that be the modulus? No. The modulus has to be a real number, right? So we kind of have to make e to the i theta absorb the i in the front. How? We can write i as a complex number. Well, it's a complex number, but using Euler's formula, i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2, but let's just add multiples of 2 pi for fun to get all the solutions, okay? Not just the principal branch. So i e to the i theta becomes this which is i times e to the i theta. Now, you have two exponentials that have the same base, Euler's number, thanks to Euler. He's done great things. In my opinion, he's the greatest mathematician. Anyways, that's a different story. Go ahead and add the exponents. You get e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n plus theta. Because they both have i, I just factored it out. And this is equal to what? This is equal to, what was it? Negative cosine theta plus i sine theta. Because remember, this is the left-hand side. This is the right-hand side, as written as LHS and RHS. Now, how do we equate these? Well, we have Euler's on the left. We should have Euler's on the right. But let's go ahead and make the cosine absorb the negative. Obviously, cosine is even, so cosine, negative cosine theta is not cosine negative theta. To 
make cosine negative, you have to put it in the second quadrant while keeping the sine positive. Does that make sense? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace the angle with pi minus theta. So cosine of pi minus theta is going to be negative cosine theta. And sine of pi minus theta is the same as sine theta. Make sense? So I changed the argument, but they have to be the same. You can't have like cosine alpha plus i sine beta, where alpha and beta are different. I mean, you can have it, but neither of these will be the argument. So you kind of have to figure it out. And this will be another interesting problem where you have to figure out, depending on, val on the values of alpha and beta. Anyways, I'm th overthinking this problem. So now, here's what I can do with the right-hand side. I can write this as e to the power i times, ready? The angle, yes, pi minus theta. Isn't that amazing? And the left-hand side is a little longer. Pi over 2 plus 2 and pi plus theta. Remember our goal. Our goal is to solve for theta, and we're so close. Okay, this is still the first method? Yes. I'm sorry, almost done. Now, set these exponents equal to each other and cancel out the i's, and you're going to end up with something like this. Pi over 2 plus 2, did I write it as 2n pi? Same thing as 2 pi n plus pi, I mean theta, equals pi minus theta from here, okay? Now, we're trying to solve for theta, so let's go ahead and put the thetas together. 2 theta equals pi minus pi over 2, which is pi over 2, minus 2 pi n. Remember, n is an integer. And what about negative n? It's also an integer. Let's replace negative n with k. We get 2 theta equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. You know what? Before I divide both sides by something, I want to make it positive because you can't just divide it by 2. Well, in this case, it's okay. Half of 2 pi is pi. Half of negative 2 pi is negative pi. And negative pi and pi are the same. But that's a very specific scenario. In general, it's not going to be true. So be careful about that. And now you can divide both sides by 2. And that's going to give you pi over 4 plus pi k. Amazing, right? We got all the solutions. This is the general solution. But if you just use k equals 0, you're going to get pi over 4. If you use k equals 1, you're going to get 5 pi over 4, so on and so forth. Make sense? There are infinitely many solutions. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick because it's real quick. And then we'll finish up. All right. So we were given the following equation, e to the i theta equals sine theta plus i cosine theta. If somebody saw this problem, they would probably think like, hey, they have a typo. Aren't they supposed to switch around? Yes and no. Depends. Because the left-hand side is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And the right-hand side is what it is, which is sine theta plus i cosine theta. Wow. <laughs> what does that mean? It just means that the real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal. And from here you get sine theta equals cosine theta. And guess what? You get it twice. Just confirmed. Well, what is that supposed to mean? As long as cosine is not zero, which is not because it doesn't satisfy this equation, we can divide both sides by cosine and get tangent theta equals one. And guess what? This gives you two solutions between zero and two pi. And those solutions are pi over four and five pi over four. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to follow A plus B I. And bye-bye.